What's up, Tim Sykes, millionaire mentor and trader here with Roland, my newest six-figure student. Congratulations, Thanks, first buddy. of all. Yep. How much have you made? What is your secret? Tell us about your journey. Um, well, I'm at 133,000 now. Um, in profits. In profits. I started with a $1,200 account, and then I put in, I think, three paychecks, so about 4,000 total. Okay. Um, it's kind of choppy at first. Uh, wasn't quite taking it seriously. Yeah. Um, so at a certain point, I did buckle down and decide, you know, I really have to figure out what's going on here for myself. Yeah. Um, which was the best thing I could have done. Uh, so, so I did start studying. I bought How to Make Millions. Uh, trading tickers by Tim Grittani, which yeah. was it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. amazing. Um, Watch those two DVDs. Those are the basics: how to make millions and trading tickers. Yeah. So, uh, so I, so I did start studying, um, and it was it was night and day. I mean, between just kind of going off your picks and seeing what's hot, kind of thing. Um, another big change was being prepared in the morning. Yeah. So actually spending the time at night to go through my scanners and. And come up with my own plans, you know, to trade these things yeah. because because you need a plan. You can't just blindly buy and and let it go and then you know try to sell. it just hope doesn't is work. Hope not a strategy. No, no, and that's what I was doing at first was a lot of hope and hope maybe this will work. Hopefully this works and and uh, so I so now I spend a lot of time preparing at night. Um, the night before. The night before, right. So every day you come ready with stocks that right. you think you might trade. Exactly. And then you'll be prepared. Right. Ideally with a plan. And and yeah, a plan of how I will trade them if if you know certain things uh, certain things happen. Um, obviously, in the mornings you wake up and there's news and yeah. there are other things that so. So now I wake up quite a bit before market open. I used to wake up, roll out of bed. Uh, one eye open, I sit there, you know, jump on the computer to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and that didn't work either. Yeah. You know, cause, because the things, with the volatility that we play, they move so quickly. Um, so now I, I'm up early enough to come up with a plan for, for any stock that may have some good news in the morning or something that may be moving that day. Um, but preparation has been key. I mean, big time, big time key. Um, Let me ask you a question, because we were talking earlier. You got to repeat this story about SINO. Oh yeah, it's such a good lesson. What happened with that stock? Yeah, so Sino, uh, that was when all the shippers were going crazy. Shipper mania, so dries. Early in your yeah, your early journey. yeah. This was early, and this was uh, when dries had gone from I think five to a hundred. Yeah. Um, so there were all these sympathy plays, Sino and GLBS and all, all the other shippers were running. So, so I got into Sino overnight, I think at five something, and I woke up the next morning at $13, $13 it was at. Um, it would have been definitely account changing for me. I mean, double, over double what I had gotten in for. And I, even though you're not supposed to, I had taken a very large position yeah. in, for my account size. Yeah. Um, so it would what definitely. What was your account size back then? My account size, I think, was at about six thousand okay. dollars or something like that. And what Let's, was your position size? My position size was at about five thousand oh dollars. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean it wasn't smart. Don't go that big. Yeah. Don't risk everything. Yeah, it wasn't smart. Trade. No, absolutely not. But uh, but it, I got lucky. Essentially, I got lucky. A little luck never hurts. No. And uh, woke up in the morning, thirteen dollars. Pre-market. So it went from five to thirteen. Yeah, overnight. And you have almost all your account in. Yeah. And why didn't you want to take profits? Because I got greedy, and, and it was pre-market, and I and I just didn't have much experience, and I thought, you know what, when the market actually opens and volume comes in, this is going to fly. Yeah. Uh, so I got very greedy. Yeah. Um, what did I say? You said if I were in Sino, I would be selling here. This is best yeah, case commentary scenario. Commentary in my chat room. Commentary pre-market in the chat room. Yeah, and I basically said, you know, F you, Tim. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, I, when I had some success, so I was already thought I knew what I was doing. Of course. When I really had no clue. But, yeah. But uh, so I'm like, I'm going to at least let the market open yeah. and see what happens. And sure enough, uh, market opens, uh, bell rings, and it just starts tanking. I mean, fast, yeah. really fast. 
13, 12, 11, 10, and I'm watching this thing like bounce. With your almost entire With account. almost my entire account. And I'm like, it's got to bounce. It's got like, you know, this has got to bounce. Um, and it wiped out all my gains. I think a couple hundred dollars I made. So when five to 13 back to five. Yeah. But at least you learned A, not to bet so big and B, to take profits when you have. Yeah, them. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I kind of do know a little something. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Just a little. Oftentimes I sell too soon. I'm too patient. I'm too safe. Um, I'm too impatient. I mean, um, and now you are too. Tell us about that. Yeah. Now, uh, now I'm very similar. I take profits way too quickly. A lot of the time, um, just because now I have seen what happens if you get greedy and you want to try to hold out. And um, this happened on ITKG the on other ITKG. day. On ITKG. Five thousand dollars in profits. Yeah. Too soon because yeah. then you could have had eleven thousand. I yeah. think in profits. Yeah. If I held but overnight. Then the next morning you crashed. It crashed. Yeah. So you're happy with your five thousand? Yeah, I was extremely happy with it. So one time you hold too long, you make nothing. Yep. Another time you sell too soon, but you took basically half the potential gain. Yeah, and that's and that's what I do now. I mean, I take profits when I get them. If it hits my goal or less, even at times, I t just take the profits when I can because, I, I mean, obviously losing sucks, but almost as almost equally as bad is being having up and, and having them wipe them out. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's demoralizing. Uh, but at least you're on the right track. Yeah. So if you're on the right track and a lot of you guys are on the right track, you just have to learn how to, you know, take the profits. Yeah, absolutely. Take the biggest chunk that you can obviously sometimes you know you're going to take one tenth of the potential profits maybe one half or sometimes you're going to like nail it yeah. itkg i sold that 11 yeah, cents i actually was, timed it yeah that was literally one of my perfect best yeah because i wanted to give it more patience right because i missed time dcth yeah. the previous day yeah so you learn from previous trades to adapt yeah you can get absolutely. more aggressive you can get less aggressive and it's not an exact science yeah so what is like your average trade now explain like what's like an ideal kind of trade for you we're, um, all, we're all different. There's no one magic formula. What works for you? Um, I like multi-day breakouts. Um, and actually from trading tickers was really helpful because my initial, uh, my initial idea of what a breakout was, was like breaks a level, just like flies. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what, what I pictured as a breakout. Maybe it's the name yeah. breakout and it's flies, but yeah. they're choppy. Yeah. You know, so, so I, I set my risk level not at the breakout level i you know the consolidation beneath that usually yeah and so it does give me a little room for the breakout to bounce around and be a little choppy as Were it you is in dcth i was in dc dcth several times okay. yeah i was in i think 0.027 oh my god and i sold that and i actually had a great gain on that a 0.0454 or something dcth just went from two cents to 35 cents yeah, it was in crazy. one week so a lot of people hate on penny stocks. Yep. Your middle name is Wolf, right? <laughs> yep. Literally, legally? Yeah, legally. Legally, his name is Wolf. And so he's rolling Wolf, kind of ironic. Yeah. But the Wolf of Wall Street does a lot of pumping, very right. illegal stuff. Right. What we do is just trading these penny stocks. We're not pumping them. We're taking gains actually too quickly. Yeah. And you're learning short selling now too? Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get into the short selling. I have a little more capital to work with. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a different mindset for yeah. sure. And, uh, but it's good to know that you can trade both sides of the volatility. Yeah, and it's and it's helped. Yeah, went from two to thirty-five. It's now back down to fifteen cents. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, a nice what is that? Seventeen times your money, and then it also drops in half, fifty percent right. in a few days. And and I just think uh, I've been going through SEC filings a lot lately, and and after you've been doing it for a while, you see kind of you know they do get pumped and a lot of times there are financings that occur have you seen our uh, learn to read sec filings dvd i have i've watched so the whole boring. thing it's, so I, i've wa actually Does watched the whole thing sleep? sometimes <laughs> it took me a couple it, I, it took me a couple times to get through but it's, i got through it but it's useful it's very useful when you see sec filings very long boring yeah legally required filings that these companies make 20 30 50 90 pages yeah long. i mean in the middle of it they'll put like a risk like oh we might run out of money then if you compare that with the press release right. issue, one pagers, we have the cure for yeah. Alzheimer's. Yeah, we exactly. Gold in Peru. Yep. Night and day. Night and day, and they're convoluted. And they're I think they're meant to have the, your regular retail investor not be able to go through them. So you have an advantage if you learn to read SEC. Hundred percent. There, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I mean the the weight I put. I don't put all the weight. You know, my the whole decision on whether I'm not going to trade a stock or not. Yeah. But 
but uh, I but it's helpful. It gives you an edge. Yeah, this is an advantage that you guys can have simply by just knowing that press releases are full of hype. SEC filings are basically created by lawyers yeah. who don't like hype right. and they put in the actual risks. And the companies will say in like on page 37, paragraph seven, there's a great risk that we will run out of money in six months. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there. It, yeah. But you just have to see it. So when I say study hard, study the charts, study different strategies, study sectors, but study SEC filings so yeah. that you know which companies like, okay, if a stock is going to spike 100, 200%, most likely, if you read their SEC filings, you see that they're running out of cash, they're gonna be out of cash in three or six months, they're gonna do a financing into that run-up. Pump and dump. Yep. And when they do that financing, because they're running out of money, the financing that they do is gonna be at a very low price compared to the stock price. When they do that financing, the stock will drop. Yep. 30, 50, 70% in a day. So it's pretty logical. Yeah, or- Why do you think so many people hate on penny stocks? Um, I, I think it's just, is it because of your middle name? No. The guy who's no. your middle name? No, but it is. I mean, movies like that. Um, and I think just like Wall Street in general want to put it out that they're how bad they are. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they want people trading them, really. They There's want, not much commissions in it. Right. You know, most people are not going to read the SEC filings, yep. so they're going to believe in this company's technology. You can't believe in any single penny stock's management promises. You can't believe in their technology. They all make pie in the sky prediction right we're only here in this beautiful place in positano italy because we don't believe a word that they say we trade the price action and yet you go on uh twitter or stock twits and you literally have these people arguing about the fundamentals of the companies and all oh, this company has great management or their pipeline they're going to the moon Junk. you see it it's Junk. just um, it's um, unbelievable at times that said so some people will say well why should we trade this junk if they're all going to fail because the stocks are volatile if you learn to take advantage of the volatility, this is why we started off this conversation yeah. with SINL going yeah. from five to 13 in one day. In one day, overnight, I woke up, it was at, thir I think it closed at eight and I woke up and it was at 13. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. You, I didn't know you almost had your whole account. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did, I did, yeah. So you had your almost your entire account. Right. And you still couldn't take profits because no. you wanted 20. Yeah, I, but I mean, I just, I was new and I was greedy. Now you've learned. I'm glad you didn't lose too much on that yeah. trade. So now, okay, so you've gone from 4,000 to 133,000 in like six months. You're studying, you're learning to take singles, not going yeah. for home runs. 100%. What is your family? What does your wife think? Um, at first she was skeptical. I mean, and my father, who is actually a very good value investor. Oh God. Very good. Oh, he's, I mean, God. he's done really well. Uh, very, very skeptical, you know, and, but, but the results don't lie. Yeah. And my wife now, she loves, so I mean, she far. loves so far, so far, so far. Don't get cocky. Absolutely. So far. And she, she keeps me in check. Good. Yeah. We, and so, I'll keep you in check too. Absolutely. I want you to be a seven figure student. That's right. Yeah. Six figures. It's a good start, but a lot of newbies have success. Yeah. Sometimes they get lucky. Yeah. It would have actually been a worse lesson if you had held on to SINO and had your biggest profit. Yeah, I agree. It would have been like, oh, every stock is like that. Uh, yeah, I agree. But because you saw what happened when it doesn't work, it didn't cost you anything. No. And you got a great lesson and you you feel that emotion. Right? Yeah, like it's it was, it was bad. Yeah. It felt bad. I mean, I almost quit. That's how bad it felt. I mean, I'm like, oh my God, like, what are you doing? But you took the right attitude. This is what a lot of you guys have to learn. This is a process. You might have done all this in six months. You're yeah. an overachiever. Yeah. That's cool. You know, you were also a professional athlete. Yeah. Talk about your professionalism in the past. I think um, this is relevant. Well, I played soccer in South America uh, and in Europe for quite a while. And, um, and that was definitely helpful. I mean, I played soccer since I was six years old. And just all the trials Practicing and tribulations. Every day. Every day. What was the thing that you did to train really hard? Oh, I, well, my I have my mother used to. She was pretty diehard. Uh, she's a Korean woman, and yeah. she's she definitely was a disciplinarian. But she uh, she would have this Hungarian uh, trainer come over in the morning before school yeah. at 5 a.m. and we'd be running suicides in our backyard. How old were you? Um, this was through middle school and high school. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we, we had a lot of extra training that we did. So I was a tennis player before school for breakfast. Most kids are eating scrambled eggs, you know, maybe yeah. a, like a piece yeah, of yeah. bread, a croissant. I'm yeah. having codfish, okay? <laughs> that is what true athletes, and I'm not the, even a true athlete, yeah. but 
I knew a lot of top tennis players. Their secret was having fish for breakfast. Yeah, that's amazing. And I'm eating this codfish for breakfast in high school, and I'm like, I'm like <laughs> gagging. But the reason why I bring that up is because if you're a professional athlete, you understand it's a process. It's a journey. You see a lot of these people like in the World Cup or yeah. if you're a tennis player in Wimbledon. Yeah. They've been training for 5, 10, 20 years every single day. Right. And they understand what it takes to be great. Yeah. A lot of other people, they want to get paid. You know, okay, I put in four hours researching this stock. I should make, you know, $80, $20 an hour. It doesn't matter how hard you research a stock. You might lose on that still. Right. It's not like a linear relationship no. between how many hours and your profits. So I'm glad you're stuck with it. I'm glad that you're an athlete and you yeah. understand. All of you athletes out there, use your brain. You know, being an athlete is tough. You got injured, you said. What, what happened? Um, I was on trial, actually, in Croatia. And I basically shattered my ankle. I mean, all the ligaments were gone. And uh, it I was, had surgery. I had Tommy John yeah. surgery. Yeah. Million dollar injury. So far, yeah. you have a six figure injury. Yeah, so far. Because right now, if you continue playing soccer, okay, maybe you'll have a decent career. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you're giving like private soccer lessons. Right. Like, or I'm coaching. Like a private or, tennis right. like, coach at some crappy country yeah, club. Yeah. Got into the stock market, you know, you have a much longer career. Right. Because you're still young. How old are you? I'm 31. You have this all your life. Right. You have decades, hopefully centuries. Yeah, hopefully. If, you know, medicine keeps growing. Right, that's true. I like that's it. true. Yes! Medicine and technology, and you expand your mind. Yeah. And there's always plays, okay? So we're here in Positano tomorrow. We're going to be live trading. What's your take? Are you going to make a trade? Um, if there's a trade to be made. That is the right answer. You do not need to trade every day. You wait for these right plays. ITKG, DCTH, SINO. Yeah. I mean, you can count just a few really good supernovas. Right. They don't happen every single day. So no. that's the secret, I think, with penny stocks. Most people are looking for trades all the time. You know, they have a small account. They want to grow it, $50 here, $100 there. But if you wait for the right play, your account can really grow. You just have to have patience. Yeah, and I think that's tough. I, I think that's one of the toughest parts is that if you're sitting watching the markets all day, your instinct is to want to jump in yeah. um, and be part of the action, Yeah. even if there's no real action there to be had. Um, I struggle with that, especially once I got over PDT. I think I dipped below PDT a couple times, oh. which was... The PDT is you need over $25,000 to day trade freely. If you're under $25,000, you can only make three day trades per week, which is enough. When you have a small account, you can trade overnight every single night, first of all, but you shouldn't be making that many trades. Like some people I see trying to make like three, four, five trades yeah. in a day. And they're like, let me trade this, let me trade that. And that's a frustrating way to live. It is, I think the, fir I think the first week I was making like five to 10 trades at least a day once I got over PDT. Only because I felt, so when you're under you PDT, when you're under PDT at times, cutting losses seems like, well, it's difficult to do uh, emotionally because you're like, I'm going to waste a day trade on a loss, yeah. you know, when that's not necessarily the correct attitude. Um, but so once I got over, I did have to curb that. That's one of the first thing I, things I had to curb after getting above PDT. Yeah. But now kind of the attitude I have is that if I'm bored, and I'm, if, if I'm watching the markets and I'm bored, then I'm probably doing something right, as yeah. opposed to the, you know, the other way around. Oftentimes, the best trade is no trade at all. Most you, of the time, I mean. Most of the time. So we sit in cash. Do you have any positions right now? No. Neither do I. We sit in cash. Even though we're traders, even though you've made six figures, even right. though I've made seven figures, a lot of the time, we have no positions. Yeah. What's the most number of positions you'll have at one time? Um, usually, usually two, three maximum. But usually, usually one at a time. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how I take them. One, one or two. Yeah. Max. Yeah. I can't, I watch every single tick. Right. And we were talking about this with the group. We actually have uh, like nearly a dozen students here. We're going around the room and you know, you don't need that many positions. I don't understand these people. They're like, oh, I'm hedged. I have 20 longs, <laughs> right. six shorts. I'm using 125% leverage. You're not a hedge fund. You're not a mutual fund. If you have a small account, right. if you trade like a sniper, one trade, Try to make like 300, try to make 200, try to make 1,000. Right. That's it. Yeah. Why is that so tough for people to understand? Um, because that's just not, that's, I, I don't know. I think that's just from the value invest uh, investment standpoint, no. that's what they do. <laughs> and Wait, it's your dad or father-in-law? My father. Oh my God. Yeah. Have you had like chats with him? Yeah, he, he, he appreciates what I do. Cool. He does. So he's he's, he's open-minded. Yeah, that's, all, that's he is. not most value investors. No, but he's very open-minded and... Uh, Value investors, be open-minded. Learn from the young wolf. <laughs> 
No, it's cool. He, we, we have great talks about it. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's brought us closer in times. So, That's yeah. awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Is he going to start trading? No. <laughs> he's not that open. No, no. <laughs> no, he's, he lets me trade for him sometimes. That's though. cool. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, a place in, there's a time and place for value investors just to be open-minded. Yeah. I mean, if a value investor and you say the word penny stocks, they just start backing away. Oh yeah. I've had people literally back away from me, <laughs> like in person when I met, I was like, I'm not like, I'm not a ghost. Right. I'm not like someone like, woo. Yeah. But they hear penny stocks. Most people invest in penny stocks like lotto tickets. Right. They think value when there is real no value right. in penny stocks. Right. So you can't combine the two. We're no. not investing in penny stocks. We don't believe them. We're trading the volatility. So that's a very important thing. A yeah. lot of people invest in penny stocks, invest, they buy 10 of them, they think one of them will be a big winner. It's like the lotto. They get pitched by people like the real wolf of Wall Street right. and other boiler rooms. They hear it from a friend, they hear tips. Don't give in to the BS. Don't give in to hype, just be meticulous. And what were you saying about the patterns and, and back testing? Um, well, I, well, I've been trying new patterns, first of all, kind of recently. But I do, I, I keep a couple spreadsheets just, just for my trades um, to see what works and what doesn't work for me. Yeah. Because I, what I've learned is that, you know, I can't necessarily do what Tim Grittani does or what Ducks does or Michael Good. It's really hard to duplicate anyone's strategy or even your strategy. Yeah. I mean, you kind of do have to find your own way and what works for you. We're um, different people. We have strengths and weaknesses. Absolutely. I kick with my toe in when I play soccer. Yeah, there you go. I'm terrible. The coach <laughs> always yelled at me, like, don't kick with your toe. But I'm like, but it goes faster. Yeah, so I yeah. would never make it as a soccer player. Right. So, Be so, individual. Yeah. Continue. Sorry. So I do. I, I have been testing out uh, short selling lately because I've made most of my money going long at this point. Yeah. Um, which I think is kind of... Uh, more applicable for small accounts. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of hard to find shares of these companies at times to short because um, there's so much competition for those shares. Yeah. But uh, I have been getting into short selling just because I, I think it's important to test new strategies and to be diverse with, with your strategies. Dude, um, I love what you're saying. For, for different market conditions. I mean, we've obviously had this sweet bull market for quite a while. And uh, my entire trading career so far, it's been short, but it's been in this bull market. Yeah. Um, so what works now is not necessarily going to work in the future. And it's good to learn different strategies. Like, you know, I'm a tennis player. Like, you know, I had a weak backhand. So my opponents could learn to just hit to my backhand right. and they would win. I was awesome with my forehand. Yeah. But if you have a forehand and backhand, you know, you don't have to fear bear markets. Right. So I'm glad you're learning short selling. We got to wrap this up. I'm starving. We got lunch waiting for us. The number one lesson that you have for people, what do you think? Number one lesson would be... Um, or top two, it doesn't have to be one. I'd say don't give up. I think a lot of people give up quickly um, because don't give up, don't blow up. So don't blow your account up before you can have enough time and experience for it to click. Beautiful. Be patient, persevere. It's a marathon, not a sprint, but also understand that you can learn to take singles. You don't have to go for home runs. You don't have to trade every day. You should not go all in on any trade. And if you do have 50, 100, 200% profits, take them. Don't go for like 1,000% profits. Don't believe any penny stock. Learn to read the SEC filings and enjoy the journey. This is a marathon. Enjoy it. Cheers. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, on your Tim. Success, man. Appreciate it. Ciao. Ciao. My name is Tim Sykes, and I teach people to trade stocks. I am a self-made multimillionaire. So this is the ideal trade that I'm gonna talk about. I want you guys to understand every single aspect of this trade. 